Welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. Today, I am so excited to introduce you to Cami Gildner. I've known Cami for a very long time, and she is an exceptional entrepreneur who leads the extraordinary women. I'm going to say movement because she just has yeah. so much um, exciting stuff happening in her community, which is a lot of what we're going to dive into and chat about today. So let me tell you a little bit about her, and then we're going to get into all the good stuff. So Cami believes that women's voices matter. She's a connector, a storyteller, and a business coach for Changemaker Women of Influence. She's the founder of all things Extraordinary Women, and she weaves soulful inspiration and mindful business strategies, helping her clients up-level their business. She has decades of leadership and marketing and strategic planning and business growth expertise. She kind of has it all, <laughs> and she leverages that to guide her clients to master their marketing, their money, and mindset. And if you don't already listen to Extraordinary Women Radio. She has a top-rated podcast, which is exceptional. And if you go back to episode 241, you might hear me on the show. Absolutely. (laughs) Cammie, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. And I like that you called the Extraordinary Women Movement. I'm just going to, I'm going to own that one. I like it. So thank you for that. (laughs) Absolutely. It's all things extraordinary women and right. Emmy is an extraordinary woman but she also attracts many many extraordinary women into yeah. her community That's and very true. yeah I mean like the women in your community are just exceptional yeah. and I think one of the things that you do so exceptionally well is build these amazing communities where there's so much connection and so that's really what I want to dive into and chat with you about today because I know for so many of us we want to have communities or we want a community that's maybe more engaged or, you know, really making a difference. And I know this is your expertise. So let's start with why community? Like, why yeah. do you think community is so important for a brand and how can it help us make the impact we want to make? Oh, thank you. And I love this topic because for me, I know that community is what's built my business. I know that's in a, and it just, it started, you know, years ago where I was always connecting one great woman to another great woman saying, you know, you guys need to know each other. And, um, I'd let them take, go from there. And I, I was doing that so often with such amazing women that suddenly I was like, I know that there is a, a you know, there's, there's something about this, right? There's something about connecting great people to great people and letting, letting the magic happen. And so that's where I started years ago. And that's when I, I I said to a business coach I was working with at the time, I'm like, you know, I'm doing this all the time. I wonder if I should start a community that's about connecting great women to great women. And that was where the seeds were born. And at the, at the time, and she says, well, why aren't you doing it? And I said, and she says, why don't you just host an event? And I'm like, well, what if nobody comes, right? <laughs> that, that fear factor. And of course people came and it just has grown and it's been really amazing. And, you know, I think that when I think about where we are in our world right now, we're just, we're better together. There's, we are better together and, we're coming into a, an interesting time in, in business where, you know, there's a, an impending, you know, recession, if you will, there is, um, you know, there's just lots of questions. I mean, there's just lots of questions. Where are things going to go? We've just come out of a pandemic. And at the end of the day, community is what's going to be lifting us up. That's what, how we, if we, when we come together, we're just stronger together. And I actually call it the collaboration quotient. When we, are able to build 
community where, you know, we can pick up the phone and lean into a strategic partner, or we can say, come be on, on the show. I mean, this is you and I, right? Let's be on a show together. Let's, let's, let's collaborate. It's so much more fun to collaborate than to get into a world of scarcity and of, of, you know, competition or whatever that might look like. We're just, when we really lean into each other, that's how we can, we can grow our businesses. Yeah, I love that. And I do feel like when you're just surrounded by other incredible people, everything feels like it's something you can figure out. You get stuck. You can grab somebody and be like, hey, can we brainstorm on this together? Can we connect? You throw an idea out and you have all of these amazing people who want to support you to yeah. see you succeed and get results. And yeah. why go it alone if you don't have to go it alone? Like we well, all have I, the choice to not I don't go even alone. know. I don't even know as as entrepreneurs, do you really think we could we could go it alone? I just don't think we could. I mean, I, that's just, I think there's just no other way other than to lean into each other. Ever, you just think about how we can, it's not a straight, easy road for on, being an entrepreneur. And when we're going to have those days, it's, it's so wonderful to have somebody that we can lean into. Yeah, I agree fully. And I would never, even if I could go it alone, I would never have any interest in going no. it alone. <laughs> no, no. It's like, I love to create, you know, I love to bring people together that's bringing all of their expertise and then, you know, let that magic just unfold from that. So what about if we don't have a community today and we want one, or maybe we have one, but it's just, we're not really getting that level of engagement that we really want out of it. Are there any tips that you've picked up over all these years or any strategies that you can share with us? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of live events. I love live events because you bring people together and you get them having conversations and so much happens and you can do it virtually. I mean, I've definitely, I mean, we had to, we had to go virtual with so much in 2020, right? I, when I host events, bringing people together with the intention of bringing people together to connect them, I don't like to create like a In fact, I won't even call it a networking event. I call it a connection event. And it's about creating meaningful conversation. And you can do that with just dropping some good questions. It's like giving them a question for a table of people to really dig into can be so much more powerful than saying, okay, tell me your elevator speech and da, da, da. I mean, no, but it's like, it just becomes, there's no energy behind it. But if you start to bring the stories into the circle, people will go, oh my gosh, I connect with that person over that story. So if you have questions like, um, let's see if I can think of one right now. Um, you know, what makes your heart leap and dance right now? That gets people to, you know, be curious and it may, lets them go a little bit deeper than, you know, just surface level conversations. And, you know, it, it starts to open up into a, a different level of conversation or, what are you most proud of this year? Or what are you most excited about, you know, creating right now? So those kinds of questions, those open-ended questions that lead to a story can get people to have deeper conversations, giving every person a chance to have a voice in that circle. And then being able to take that and say, okay, you guys keep connecting. If you, if you connected with someone here, go, go take it another step further. Yeah, I love that. That's such a great advice. And I do think if you think of what you remember, right, it's sure somebody might have just the right elevator pitch where they said just the right thing where you're like, oh, that's interesting. I want to follow up with them later. But you're much more likely to remember an amazing story or something that had emotion that you connected with or somebody who did something and you're like, oh, I did that before. I've always wanted to do that or I could so relate to that. Just totally different experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So as you've been growing your own community over these past several years, what have some of the lessons been along the way and how has it really contributed to the growth of your business overall? Yeah. You know, I learn lessons every day when it comes to community and and the growth of my business. But I'll tell you, when I decided to start hosting my annual conference, that was a really big, that was a big pivotal moment for me, right? Where I decided to bring people together in real life, because I think there's, there's just something such with such beauty and strength about bringing a group of women together in a room. And so 
that really helped me open up into watching how really organic conversations and organic relationship building happen. When I look at my community, I know that there have been deals that have been made. There have been long-term friendships that have been made. There's been, um, you know, people have become clients of one another. And that to me lights my, my world up because that's what it's about is it's about creating those, those ripple effect of impact that people can create together. And the way you do that is just organically and it's, and you can't force that, you know, it's like if, if you see the things that are like speed networking or something like that, it would, it would never, that would just never really open up the world to that. And, um, you know, it wouldn't open up to the, the possibilities, I guess is what I'm, what I'm saying there is, is the possibility just won't come about unless you're really creating those organic ways of doing that. When I think about what I've, it's definitely grown my business. I know that, you know, between my conference, between um, my podcast, which is all about women's voices and putting women's voices out in bigger ways, that has grown my brand presence. You know, it's given me credibility. Um, you know, I think the podcasting piece of, of showing up is we get to interview so many amazing women and suddenly you're in a whole new circle of, of people that you, that you're getting to be introduced to. And, you know, and that's where the growth comes your community growth comes from your revenue growth comes from there. I always say that podcasting is, has given me, I don't know, probably hundreds of thousands of people that would have never heard my message. And so when you have these online ways that we bring our, our message out into the world and we create connections, real life connections with people that we're interviewing or that we're going on their shows. And then we also have live scenarios you, you balance both sides of that out and that's where i think the the leverage really comes in in growing our businesses yeah absolutely and so i want to go back to something you said very early on because i bet a lot of listeners might be in this place where they're thinking this sounds amazing and i would love nothing more than to host a live event yeah but what if nobody <laughs> shows up <laughs> right Right. And it's, a, you know, it's like, so it is, it is such a real th fear because I, I know it so well. And at the same time, you know, if three people show up, you've made three people connect together and then you just keep doing it. And I, I will say, you know, I, I was hearing, I heard something yesterday. I was listening to this whole Lionsgate um, day um, and I was listening to all these different speakers and what somebody was talking about the clarity and message and then the consistency, right, was the other part of this. You got to have the clarity, but then you got to have the consistency. And the consistency piece is what, you know, if we're consistently going out and having these conversations, if we're consistently inviting people into more conversations with us, deeper conversations, that's where it really grows. And it's, it might grow, start with three people and it might grow to 20. And then, you know, it just keeps growing until you are impacting hundreds of thousands of people. And that's, that's the beauty of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so no just go do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go do it. So one of the other things that you do that I just resonate with so much, and I agree with um, wholeheartedly, is that you really help tap into aspirations and desires and not pains and fears when you're doing your marketing, when you're helping build a brand. And I'd love to hear your perspective on why you think that's so important. Thank you for that. It's, I am so passionate and I'm so glad that you believe it as well, because I, I, I feel like we're in the shift. We're in the shift of the way we market businesses, especially coaching and consulting businesses, um, entrepreneurial businesses, you know, so for so many years, so many people, you know, said, find the salt and just keep digging it in. And to me, I went down the pathway. So this is my story was I went down a pathway. Um, when I first started my business, it grew quite rapidly. I was in a good space in a good community. And then I found this, I found some gurus and I started following their formulas, which were filled with pain and scarcity um, messaging. And I changed up all of my marketing to follow those formulas. And 
I lost the soul and heart of my, my, my marketing one, I was following the formulas and two, it was, it was really pulling, it was, it was pulling people down and went energetically. I could feel that shift and I didn't, I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, but of course my business was growing. And then all of a sudden it really leveled out and it, then it actually dropped in a year. And I was like, okay, something's off here. What's off. And I really had to do some of that inner work. You know, I, I'm very much about listening to that soul inspired wisdom when we come to writing our own messaging or when we are creating our messaging and our brand, it's like what comes up from inside so that we're creating a brand that's uniquely ours. But what really came clear to me was, is I was, I want to lift people up in my message and I want that to see bigger possibilities. Not that we don't understand the pains that they're going through and not that we don't understand the emotions. We have to understand that. But on the flip side of that, if we, if the biggest messages that we're putting out into the world are really about helping them see aspirationally what's possible in their business and their lives and, you know, however you're helping people, that really shifts up the energy of your marketing. And it's not, it's not turning down the, the energetic dial of how they're receiving. It's like, you know, when, when you're in marketing that is pain-based and scarcity, fear, you know, fear mongering kind of, of, of marketing, you're turning down their, those, your potential clients energy, you're totally turning it down versus turning it up. That's such a good point. And I never really thought about it from that perspective before. Mm -hmm. I just like you, I like to help people see what's possible. Yeah. I don't like people know their pain. They're well yeah. aware. I don't need to <laughs> remind them. I don't yeah. need to agitate it. Like yeah. they get it. They totally get it. Why yeah. not tap into the spirit of possibility? But I never thought about it from the energetic and kind of like almost bringing down the level of where people are at. And of course you want to put them, you want to help raise them up, not <laughs> bring yeah. them back down. Yeah. And it doesn't mean, I mean, you might use a question from the pain side. You might say, you know, are you feeling this? Mm -hmm. Then let's talk about what would it be like if, and you know, so you, it's, it's a really short, the amount of time that you're giving to the, the pain side of it is small. And the, the aspiration side is much larger. So I feel like that's one of those marketing rules, and I'm saying rules in air quotes, that we're frequently told that you need to do. And obviously, yeah. there's different ways you can approach things. So yeah. are there any other of those kind of marketing rules, if you will, that you think it really makes sense for us to be breaking or finding a different approach to? I do. And I think, you know, I'm a traditionally trained marketer. I did that for 20 years in the the corporate world. And it was really time for, you know, I could feel that there was a different way of marketing that was being called into our world. And I, you know, I'm a big believer that our world is shifting, that if we are doing marketing the same way, if we are building our businesses the same way we did five years ago, or even two or one years ago, we're missing something. And I think this is a time where we really need to tune in and think about how we are showing up energetically in the world? Are we really bringing our best light? And if we're, and if we're, if we're just bringing in a lot of old ways of doing things, it's a good time to really question that. Um, one of the things I like to talk about is building your brand from the inside out. And so that's about finding this light inside of you and building that brand of you from, from the essence of you. And when you do that, there's no one that has a brand just like you. You just, you suddenly become a, a brand of, of, or a category of one because there's no one just like you. And I think that really opens up the door to collaboration it, versus competition. And, you know, I think this is one of those things that when we build our brand from the inside out, we really start to tap into the soul and the stories of that person. Uh, you know, so if this is you, it's like you're, it's, your best light is coming forward. So we're really lighting it up from that perspective. And the second one is um, there is no competition, right? When, when you do this and, and it, as a former VP of marketing, I could tell you, I would have never thought that I would have said that 15 years ago. There's no such thing as competition, but when we do build a brand from the inside out and we really focus on how we're serving our clients, that's a different, you know, it's a different way of showing up in the world. So that's another rule is just throw out the competition. I, I just, I don't focus on competition. I focus on collaboration and it's just so much, it's such a higher energy to show up in. 
and you know, it's working. So <laughs> it's how I teach my clients as well. And I, you know, I love what happens from that. It's the spark that happens from it. And, you know, we've already talked about the pain-based and scarcity and throughout the pain-based and scarcity marketing. So I really talk, you know, throughout the formulas, that sort of thing, and really build your brand from this light of you. And I, I call speaking your client's love language. And, um, that's the aspirational side of it, right? It's like, you know, when we speak our clients love language, we're helping them see bigger. And then the, the last one is just saying no to the hustle because I don't, you know, I love the corporate world because I did hustle. I worked really long hours and it's not what I ever want to create in my business. So really learn to apply the business models and business strategies into our businesses that enable us to scale, enable us to, you know, take our, simplify our businesses so that we are working smart in our businesses. And also when we're in alignment with that high level purpose that we're meant to be do, delivering in the world, it gets easier because the universe gets in behind us and we're not pushing things up a hill all the time. And it's not to say it's always easy, but it's, it's a, it's a, that consistency place. If you're in alignment with the work that you're meant to be bringing into the world, it, it changes, it, it lets it, you get out of the hustle. Yeah, you are definitely speaking my language there. You said many things that I am all about, not hustling, simplify to scale, all of that. Yeah, a big yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's, and, and I know that's why you and I have always aligned with each other because I remember the first, I think we, we met on a breakout call sometime a long time ago. And it was just, I knew that we spoke the same language and that's, that's so cool. I love it. So I want to hear a little bit more about your upcoming event and mm -hmm. I'd love for you to share with the listeners a little bit more about what you do and how you work with people and tell us what's coming up for you and all about this incredible event that you have. Okay. So I've got my eighth annual, I'm so excited. It's the eighth annual Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference coming up in November in Golden, Colorado. And this is a just a fantastic, it's so much fun. I have amazing, amazing lineup of speakers. It's, you know, I look across the board and I've just pinched myself who's in the room joining me. And so this is the collaborate, collaborator side of me saying, you know, yes, let's all, let's put on a party and invite, and invite the most amazing women to share their gifts. And it's all about raising up the voice, the vision, and the visibility of, of very extraordinary women joining us in the room. A lot of my, or all my clients are really in, tuned into the impact that they're going to create with their work. And this is, um, so we're going to be talking, there's going to be um, TEDx conversations, there's going to be video conversations, there's going to be podcast conversations, and then I'm going to be bringing all of my best teachings in the world of voice, vision, and visibility. So how do you get out there and really grow your business with those three pillars so that you're being seen and being heard for the most important work, important work that you are bringing in the world? Fantastic. Now, where can people find you and follow all of the amazing things that you're up to? And where can they learn more about your event? Yeah, so it's, you can find out about the event at camigelner.com forward slash ignite. So it's Extraordinary Women Ignite. And that's November uh, 10th through the 12th. And then if you want to just know more about me, jump out at camigelner.com and you can find out about my mastermind programs that I run. I also have a Facebook community called Extraordinary Women Connect. So if you're on Facebook, jump out there. But on any of the platforms, I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn and all the all the platforms. So just jump out and connect with me there. I love to connect with people there. And um, let's let's have a conversation. I love it. Now, there's one question I ask everybody, and I'm so uh -huh. curious to hear your answer on, and that is in your business, how do you work smarter, not harder and keep things lean? Hmm. Such a good question. And I think it's one of the most important things we can do. Otherwise we end up in that hustle mode, right? Um, I would say the, the most important lesson that I've learned there is to simplify my offerings and to keep, create a, a you know, a business model where, I'm inviting people into my business that, um, you know, I'm helping serve them at a level, but there's a pathway into, you know, into their journey with me that I can continue to help them. So clarity and message, and then having the right, the right packaging and uh, packaging to bring people into, to help solve their biggest problems. But 
I think um, our business models are a core essential piece of keeping our businesses simple. And it's, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have an, we have this tendency to say, want to say yes to a whole lot of things. And I've been there. I've, <laughs> in fact, even just this year, I've said, you know, I think this isn't really fitting in this simplicity model. So starting to release some things. And so being very focused on keeping it clear and clean. I love it. Clear and clean for the win every single time. Yeah. <laughs> So before we wrap up today, any final tips on leveraging community and building that connection in our own businesses to really help us grow our business and make the impact that we want to make? Just every time you get an opportunity to meet somebody, take the chance to get to know them. I really, you know, don't go into it with a, what are you going to do for me? But really go into, let me, let's know more about one another. You know, if, if you guys would have been on here before we hit the, the record button today, you would have see, seen us both holding up our, our Yorkie puppies, you know, and that was something that connected us last year. And, you know, we both lost our, our dog and then we both ended up getting new dogs. And, you know, so there's, there's always a thread, right? So when you're going into a conversation with somebody, really take that as an opportunity to get to know them a little bit better and look for those threads that can connect you and, you know, keep building on it, really invest time in those relationships. Amazing. Brilliant. Cami, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you all loved this conversation as much as I do. You will find all the links down below in the show notes, and we will see you again next week. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com slash group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.